Welcome to the Parenting at Mealtime and Playtime Quality Improvement Pre-Work Webinar. This webinar will serve to prepare you and orientate you to the Quality Improvement Framework and key to learning environment that you'll use throughout the next months as you work on the Parenting at Mealtime and Playtime program. This webinar covers several elements. The first is an overview of PMP and its project team, discussing fundamental concepts and the resources that are available to you, as well as the main goal we hope that you achieve and the key driver diagram or roadmap to help you towards that goal. There'll be several pre-work activities to work on between viewing this webinar and as you start engaging within the quality improvement system. I'll talk a little bit about quality improvement teams if that's the route that you would like to take the chart reviews that you'll be collecting throughout this time to help improve those project measures to achieve the project goal, and then KEDA. That's the Quality Improvement Data Aggregator, where you'll be working and most of the information that you'll be viewing and watching and data that you'll be entering will be housed. I'll conclude with some next steps, discussing what our syllabus will be, and then orientate you to the preparatory and action period KEDA modules. The PMP project team is comprised of four individuals. We have two co-medical directors that will be your content expertise. That's Dr. Amy Sternstein and Dr. Elizabeth Smuda. Samantha Anzels is a quality improvement consultant, and that's me. I'll be walking you through this pre-work webinar and much of the quality improvement and data modules. And our program manager is Renee Dickman. She'll be your go-to one-stop resource for this project if you have any questions and she'll direct you to the appropriate resource. So what is PMP? PMP reinvents a previously successful program of ounce of prevention and also utilizes another Ohio AAP program, a pound of cure. And that pound of cure program is for when children are identified at risk of or already carrying excess weight. And it couples those two programs with additional tools that really emphasize the importance of parenting and the parent and child interactions around mealtimes, playtimes, reading, and developmental milestones. So together, ounce of prevention with pound of cure and those additional elements really create the parenting at mealtime and playtime curriculum. PMP is designed to help assist clinicians with providing anticipatory guidance to and assessing obesity-related health risk in infants and young children, specifically birth through five years of age, to help instill a foundation of healthy lifestyle behaviors at an early age. The Parenting at Mealtime and Playtime program offers training, resources, and strategies to help those clinicians educate and counsel the parents that they see during these well-child visit encounters about establishing sound nutrition and strong fundamental motor skills for their children birth through five years of age. We really focus on three outcomes as you participate in this quality improvement collaborative that you as a provider and your practice are participating quality improvement wise to improve your clinical environment and processes, creating test of change to identify and improve what components relative to PMP you can work on to bolster and strengthen. And this is done through data collection in the form of regular chart reviews and are educated in several pre-recorded webinars, not only on PMP content and quality improvement, but also through quarterly live hot topic webinars. And these are all with the purpose, the ultimate outcome of intervening early to prevent obesity through a comprehensive risk assessment and weight management when it's appropriate to set children up to achieve the optimal health. So early identification and intervention, and it's really a practice strategy to work to employ our three main targets while you're considering several elements. And when we talk about early identification in PMP, we have three strategies that we target. And those are emphasized on each handout and for you to include as a part of your well visit encounters through your anticipatory guidance, as well as strong components of PMP's foundational concepts and keys to those early identification and intervention discussions. And those three main targets are encouraging and fostering the parent-child dialogue, 
how you can help strengthen motor skills and their development, and specifically age and developmentally appropriate dietary habits and healthy weight gain, setting appropriate expectations around all three of these elements. And you're focusing on uh, that the, have been researched and are discussed a little further in the background webinar that's available for MOC2 credit. The handouts that accompany your well visits and supplement the pre-recorded webinars that complement the foundational concepts of PMP are the parent-child engagement, the parenting style, early brain development, and social-emotional skills. And at each well visit, the intent of PMP is to be used at every well visit, regardless of the child's weight status or risk assessment, just as you would approach the very familiar anticipatory guidance found with the AAP's Bright Futures. That's how we intend to use PMP. It's essential to full implementation of PMP that the provider bolsters their pre-existing skill set that you already are doing around anticipatory guidance by layering in seven, several additional components that we really feel are important to PMP that facilitate the assessment of risk, hone your counseling efforts as you utilize some of our diet and activity history collection forms to all focus on age and developmentally appropriate dietary advice, promotion of play and motor skill development, and enhancing the child's language skills. So you're really providing targeted counseling coupled with risk assessment to meet in the middle and cover those four areas. We've talked about determining risk several times and risk assessment will review the elements that we have on the screen and be a crucial component to determining whether or not additional steps need to be taken with the child and the family that you're seeing at your well child visit encounter. But an important emphasis is really placed on this last item of lifestyle habits and diet and activity. As you're reviewing the family history and medical history, doing that review of systems, working up the child's blood pressure and labs, those are all instrumental to the medical risk. Looking at the behavioral risk is something important and instrumental to PMP. And that's something that we'll focus on in some of our webinars and of course in our diet and activity history collection forms. And while you're participating in this project, there are several resources that'll be available to you. The first of which, and we are most proud of, are the parenting handouts that we have. So with your participation in this project and through the KEDA environment, you can get these resources electronically or ask for them physically, are the PMP and Pound of Cure handouts. What's currently on the screen are the PMP handouts for the four-year well child visit. And you can see the different elements that we have covered here with parenting tips, feeding advice, how to stay active and sleep advice on the front hand side where it notes the four year age and the reverse side talks about play with a purpose specific to that age, what to look for within your child as you're watching them, how to have fun at mealtime. Again, that play with a purpose, talking, building muscles, working on fine hand and motor skill development, and then different things that you can try within your home. We also have the Parenting at Mealtime and Playtime mobile app. You can view it at the website that's listed at the screen, pmp.ohioaap.org, or you can download it from Google Play or the App Store. Within this app, all of those handouts that we will be providing to you in KEDA and electronic format will also be available for the well child visits, birth through five years of age. We also have several videos on feeding, play, and nutrition, and some push notifications that are sent on a monthly or age specific milestones that not only give tips that are specific to that age, but are reminders about an upcoming well child visit. And then of course, resources for the parents organized by age and resources that you as a physician can use to discuss with parents. Other resources that are available to you as you participate, in addition to the PMP app and the handouts, will be the ability to engage in a discussion on pressing topics with Ohio's childhood obesity experts. You're going to have ongoing support from your peers as you participate in quarterly action period calls. Those are our hot topic webinars. 
You will always have access to support through the Ohio chapter staff and the PMP project team. And then upon completing this project, you'll have up to $500 to purchase PMP resources. And that could be purchasing things like my plates, my plate placemats, and other elements that you think would be helpful in the course of your counseling and your anticipatory guidance in well child visits birth through five years of age. So bringing this all together, knowing a bit more about what PMP is, the global purpose of this project is to help those children birth through five years of age achieve optimal health for and the prevention of overweight in these young children by working on early identification strategies of risk at these well child visits. And we'll sit, assist you in your progress towards this goal through a series of chart reviews at baseline and as you go through KEDA, looking at targeted and uh, measures and then what interventions would helpful to you um, with respect to the key driver diagram and items mentioned in the quality improvement related webinars within KEDA. This is the key driver diagram that we'll be using during your time within this quality improvement project. On the left hand side at the bottom, you'll see that global aim we just discussed. Directly above that are our SMART aims. What are the purposes and aims that we're specifically trying to achieve as you participate in this project? And over the course of the time that you're working on this, we hope that you are not only improving your documentation of that obesity-related health risk assessment, but you're improving your PMP-specific anticipatory guidance on nutrition and activity. And then for those families where it warrants it, having a discussion and deciding when appropriate, the use and documentation of your motivational interviewing strategies, and more importantly, what goals were set based on the outcome of that motivational interviewing. And the final piece is looking at follow-up on goals set at previous visits, improving that. It doesn't mean that you necessarily need to track individuals throughout this process, but just putting a little reminder in the back of your head that you should be checking the previous chart to see if any goals were set behavioral or risk assessment wise that you should be following up on on this current visit. If it doesn't apply, doesn't you know, it's nothing that you need to worry about charting. But if it does and it's specific to that patient, making sure to follow up appropriately and note the important elements. The key drivers in the middle really hone in on the elements we've discussed. We've talked about providing age and developmentally appropriate preventative care and anticipatory guidance. And we have a series of boxes under the interventions on the far right hand column that strategize how you can accomplish that. Similarly, we're looking at assessing risk for excess weight gain and the intervention at an early age for obesity management. And again, interventions associated with each of those two boxes to help you achieve and work towards the key drivers of this program to help you achieve the specific aims and ultimately get to that global aim. And this is a high level project overview that brings that key driver diagram up to a higher level. So each module has its own topic or area of emphasis be it PMP related or quality improvement content to be viewed as a webinar. And for those that have a webinar to view, there'll be a post test to complete. Coupled with each module, there's some data to collect. Data is typically termed as cycles. And as you review the content with each, within each section, consider what elements are pertinent to your practice and improvement journey, test those concepts, and then collect your data. Once the minimum number of charts are entered for each of your cycles, you can close that cycle out and evaluate where you currently stand with regards to the project measures and the improvements that you've made to determine your next steps. Hot topic calls um, are a component of our action period, and these will not only address an important area of PMP, but also discuss the data that's collectively been gathered within KEDA and spark some discussion amongst participants to really facilitate all of your improvement efforts. So you can see as you progress through this, the modules are noted um, for what will be completed or what it's associated with. 
For example, module one is just um, due and closes December 15th, and that's really your pre-work. So viewing this pre-work webinar or attending and seeing the information at annual meeting, if you're going to work on this as a core quality improvement team, gathering that team together and setting some expectations and having a dialogue about what will be accomplished and completing your baseline data. Module two is really takes the place of our in-person learning sessions and provides the background in the form of an MOC2 and then resources that you can um, use relative to PMP throughout your time in this project. That closes January 19th. And then the action period are, are modules three through six. The collection of those all need to be completed by March 23rd, although there are separate closeout dates noted within KEDA for each of those. And that really relates to the information I just spoke about with looking at webinars and post tests to complete, looking at tests of change, what works, what's improving your clinical care, the submission of data and attendance of hot topic webinars. And then we conclude everything with a discussion on sustainability. Some of that content is layered in throughout the modules, but we really wrap it up within this module seven, which is to can be completed by April 13th to put you on the right foot moving out of this quality improvement project to a sustainable way of keeping PMP within your practice. So each module has a designated close date. KEDA is certainly self-paced, so you can progress through these modules as quickly as your patient volume allows, um, but data does need to be entered and post-test webinars completed by the dates noted within each module. I've mentioned that it may be helpful to have an improvement team. Some individuals may want to go about this solo, and they are certainly able to and are certainly successful in doing this. But as you're looking towards more long-term or sustainability and spread of this content to all providers within your practice, and having all the children that you see within your practice have this layered into their well-child visits, a team is certainly a helpful approach to doing from the start. And we encourage an interprofessional team to include people like your administrator, maybe an office manager, of course your clinicians and nurses, and sometimes even a social worker. If you are going the team route, the structure of it is also helpful. So having that physician champion who's really going to get support and buy in and encourage people and make sure that they're held accountable for getting things in and working on this improvement effort. That champion can also be the day-to-day -day contact, or they may have someone else that would like to be in contact with Renee to help make sure everything's getting checked off the list to get MOC4 credit um, and meet the requirements. Then there are persons with technical expertise. Um, there's minimal technical items that need to be completed for this in terms of the KEDA, but also as you're working to improve things within your practice, it may be helpful to have someone in IT that can help improve your documentation within your electronic medical record if you use that, um, or other elements within your practice that are a little more technical. And then certainly working on engaging senior leadership or sponsors to have their buy-in to make this process a little more easily facilitated and embedded within your practice. As you're participating in KEDA, we use the model for improvement in all of our quality improvement efforts. And the model for improvement encompasses three questions. The first of which is, what are we trying to accomplish? And that's our aim. We have that global aim that I discussed at the beginning, helping children achieve that optimal health. And then the second question is, how will we know that change is an improvement? And we have a series of measures, not only those specific aims, but ones that we'll collect in our chart reviews that in aggregate help us reach the specific aims that give us a quick indication of whether or not the changes that we're making are actually resulting in improvement. And then the final question is, what is the actual change that we can make to move things in the right direction that will result in improvement? And that's where our PDSA cycles, test of change, and our learning will occur. We have some of those to start off within the key driver diagram, but there are certainly other ones that you may see as you're watching quality improvement or content webinars 
that you can decide to test and see whether or not they work best within your clinical environment with the providers that you work with and the patients that you see. So that smart aim um, that goes back to that first question really honing in on what we want to accomplish and this again is on the key driver diagram and we have about six months, maybe sooner, depending on how quickly you progress through KEDA, that you as a provider or your practice or quality improvement team will work to improve delivery of anticipatory guidance and your identification of obesity-related risk at well child visits, birth through five years of age, so that you're measurably improving the behavioral health of infants and young children. And I've walked through the specific aims already, but those focus on your documentation of obesity-related health risk, the providers are documenting anticipatory guidance on nutrition and physical activity. When it's appropriate, using motivational interviewing techniques to set a goal with families. And then also when it's applicable, looking at previously set goals at other well child visits and following up on those at your current well visit. And these measures then fall down into a series of process measures that we have that help with the first two around documentation of obesity related risk and your anticipatory guidance. We are looking specifically at your documentation of weight status, the growth trajectory, and this is something that was really impactful and meaningful to past providers, but was there documentation of discussing the child's growth relative to their weight for length or BMI percentile and the growth curves since their last visit? And then some more traditional risk factors of blood pressure category for those kids over the age of three an obesity centric family history and what has been collected or updated within the chart. Moving on to that second specific aim it's at age appropriate counseling for nutrition and physical activity. And then finally, the use of motivational interviewing. Are you setting smart goals and are you following up on those previously set goals. And these elements are all captured within the chart review tool. We've tried to make this as streamlined and easy as possible. Um, within this tool, there are a series of questions to complete. The first ones, one through four, really look at the age of the child, um, who was attending the visit with that child, when that visit occurred, and the gender. You then move into the risk assessment components measures five through eight here of weight for weight status growth trajectory blood pressure category and family history the main features that you're looking to see whether or not documentation occurred are in this second column the one that has the check all in red that's what you need to have to say yes or no a certain measure was achieved so for instance with weight status as you're looking through the child's chart, was there review and documentation of the child's weight, of their weight length or height, dependent on their age, and then again, dependent on their age, weight for length or BMI percentile. The final component to check whether or not it was explicitly documented was weight status. So, and that weight status is broken down into underweight, healthy weight, overweight, or obese. Adjacent to the measure number five weight status is the final column on the right that gives us a little more detailed information that does not re require to have it explicitly or um, written verbatim within your documentation but it's just something to note to give a little more information about what happened at that visit so for weight status it's what was the child's actual weight status underweight healthy weight overweight or obese and you'll just check that box you can then move through the rest of the chart review tool doing that same sort of collection of data for growth trajectory, blood pressure category, and family history, and noting the other items in the third column of what was indicated. You can see PMP anticipatory guidance for nutrition, and here on physical activity um, that note what occurred during that visit. There have been some updates to the tool since the quality improvement webinars and data collection um, walkthrough was recorded, and those are indicated here. We've tried to omit some of the burdensome components of the data collection by having to select NA options or working through the logic. So there's a little more built into the tool within KEDA to let you know whether or not you should progress on to the next question. And that's really based on 
item 11. Select all that apply for the child. So you'll review measures 5 through 10 and see and check whether or not the child was of healthy weight. They stayed on the same or similar growth curve since their last well visit. After reviewing their diet and activity, had all the optimal or close to optimal diet and activity behaviors. If they're over the age of three, they had a normal blood pressure. And then looking at their family history, they had no positive findings, no obesity centric risk factors were in that family history. If you select all five of those items, you do not need to do questions 12 and 13. Those are really for those families that have a behavioral target you wanna focus on. Maybe the child has high blood pressure or is prehypertensive, or maybe gained a significant amount of weight since their last visit and that growth curve notes that. 12 and 13 on motivational interviewing and goal setting are really specific to helping the family hone in, determining if they're ready to make a change and setting a goal with that family. If everything is hunky-dory, you don't have to do those two items. You can look then to see 14 on goal follow-up. At the previous visit, was there any goal that you were supposed to follow up on? If there was, did you do so? Um, if there wasn't a goal to follow up on, you don't really even have to worry about question 15 because that corresponds to the family's stage of change and what has occurred since their previous well visit. So hopefully this omits some of the not applicable options or sub questions that I had discussed in the quality improvement webinars. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Renee and she'll help connect you with myself so we can work through some of these elements. As you're working on your pre-work, a big component of that are baseline chart reviews. There are 12 charts to be reviewed, chosen at random, for each provider that's seeking MOC Part 4 credit. They are comprised of one chart from each of the following well child visit clusters. You can have one chart from the newborn to four month visits, another chart from the six and nine month visits, one from the 12 and 15 month visits. You can choose the 18 or 24 month visit for the, sec the fourth cluster. The fifth cluster represents the 30 month and three year visits. And the final cluster is the four and five year visits. So you can see there are six clusters, one chart chosen from each of those. And those charts are broken down into timeframes. So as you're going to enter your data, do it in a sequential process. Cycle one will include six charts, one from each of those clusters, for children that you saw for well visits in August of 2017. Cycle two, you'll use that same random poll, one from each of those age clusters, to have a collective six charts to enter for children seen from September 2017. As you're going through and polling this data, it's really helpful to review the measures table just to make sure you're on the same page with what was collected. As I mentioned, the column that had the check all with red text was the items that needed to be collected for um, explicit documentation to say, yes, I did document weight status or no, I did not. So this measures table really outlines what you need to have explicitly in your chart. And again, that's represented by check boxes in that second column to say, yes, I had this appropriately documented. If you meet all of those criteria, sometimes it's one, sometimes it's three elements, then you had documentation. If one of those components is missing from any of the charts, then there is no documentation for that specific chart. And we go through all the elements, not only risk factor, but your counseling and anticipatory guidance, what you need to have for motivational interviewing, goal setting, and goal follow-up. Um, you can see, for instance, with the nutrition and physical activity counseling, that there are three components that are needed need to be met in order to say you documented nutrition counseling or that you documented physical activity. And that's denoted by the elements one through three in each of these rows. So noting the use of PMP's tool for diet and activity review or having a similar tool or intake form that reviews nutrition history or documenting what the child's current age appropriate dietary habits were. We have some examples of those um, age appropriate topics listed in the measures table that you can download from KEDA. The second element is discussing those. 
how everything's going, what they should be expecting moving forward. And the final element is giving an age appropriate PMP well child visit handout. And you can use the same handout for nutrition and physical activity, but just noting that so you know what was given, can follow up on that and see what the parents thought next time they come back. So Kita, after you viewed this webinar today, everything that you really need and all that content is housed at qidata.aap.org backslash Ohio PMP. And as you've reached out to Renee and have registered to enroll in this project, you've given us information to help log you in to the program. Once you're logged in, you'll see a home screen similar to this. You won't see the project administration tab. You'll just see the first three tabs um, as you're working on this. But this is what the home page looks like and what you'll have access to as you work on this improvement effort. Your data entry and analysis for baseline chart reviews and the chart reviews for action periods will all occur on the project homepage. And as you scroll a little further down that project homepage, you can see where this will occur. There's this data collection area, and then you can note for cycle one that you have six charts entered and completed and are able to analyze that data. And then you see your second cycle has opened up and you need six charts to be entered. You haven't completed that yet. So you'll be able to go in and enter data. As you analyze data and see this analyze data button, there are two options to, to do so. There is the analysis of data through the button in the actions column or by selecting a report from that drop down menu. Um, there are several items that you can use to pull your data and that is discussed in more detail within the KEDA modules. As you do pull that data from the Analyze Data section button, there are several features available to annotate what happened within that specific chart or set of charts that you reviewed for cycle one, what your test of change may be. You can see the measure analysis where you currently stack up against a group if you're participating with multiple providers, the goals that we've set and have um, noted on the key driver diagram, and what gap exists from where you currently are to reaching that goal. And then you have the ability to go a little further down and look at each specific measure and aggregate a run chart for all the data that you have collected and see how you're progressing on your improvement efforts. Also after today, all the items that you need to complete for MOC Part 4 credit are located in a sequential fashion within the workspace. So you can go to that tab. We previously saw the project homepage and now we're on the project workspace. It has listed at the top what you need to do to get your MOC Part 4 credit. Um, attending this webinar and viewing it, following up with Renee with any questions you may have getting your baseline data in, a total of 12 charts, and then reviewing the content in each of the modules, those gray ovals below, by the closing date, completing the specific content within each of those modules. You'll have a total of five cycles of data to co collect and submit with six charts per cycle, submission of two PDSA cycles and an office flow diagram, and then completing a pre and post project survey. All of the stuff that you have to complete is noted within each of these modules. Again, it is self-directed. You can go through this as quickly as your patient volume allows or your time allows, as long as it is completed by the module closeout date noted in the title of each of the modules. You'll see as you open those up what needs to be completed and how to complete that. And there are also some suggestions for improvements that you can make. So for instance, as we open up this pre-work and baseline data collection, this specific module closes December 15th. It notes in a sequential fashion what you should complete. The first thing that you would be completing is the webinar laying the foundation for improvement. We then draw your attention to the aims, some of which we discussed here, but you can download them in your PMP Cree driver diagram. And then data entry, and that's the real bulk of what this web uh, module is um, comprised of, where you can download the chart review tool and measures table, and then it highlights again 
where to collect the data from what well child visit clusters and from what time frame. The final component is to complete that pre-work survey. So it walks you through elements in a sequential fashion, what needs to be done. Anything that has um, a blue text is a hyperlink that will bring you either to a webinar and the post-test questions or help you download a specific document. Another example of this is a little further along in one of our action periods. This specific module is on motivational interviewing and that closes February 9th. It has uh, a webinar by Dr. Chris Bowling on motivational interviewing strategies and talks about how you can prove specific elements of the chart review tools. And then also the webinar on interpreting your improvement data and completing that post-test question. We really encourage you to view the content within each of these modules first and then do a test of change or work on an area for improvement and then wait a little bit before you collect your data just so you have some time to see the impact of the changes that you've made on future well child visits and the counseling encounters that you've had. And then again, after today, the only remaining live or in-person interactions are our hot topics that occur on a quarterly basis. Um, we do have in-depth explanations included in each of the quality improvement webinars about the quality improvement methodology that we're using, how to do test of change and how to work through items, as well as having some specific items that you can strategize and work on layered in with each of the key dub modules. And then finally, we'll provide regular progress reports to update you on what we've seen come across. We do get notifications about post-tests that you've completed after viewing a webinar. We are able to monitor your data to know what you've submitted as, as well as you being able to see that on the project homepage. So together, we'll be able to note what you've completed and what remains to help you get that MOC Part 4 credit. There's the project syllabus. Um, within the workspace tab in KEDA, it denotes all the required components of the project, not only um, in a more high level fashion of what you need to get for your MOC Part 4 credit, but as you open up each module and note its sequential fashion, those items need to be ticked off to get your MOC Part 4. Our project runs from the month of October through April 13th, and we'll consolidate all this information in the progress noting what criteria to complete, the due dates, and some suggested next items to complete um, by the next date. So next steps, if you haven't already, register and verifying your access to PMP KEDA and notifying the PMP team, specifically Renee, of those individuals who are seeking MOC Part 4 credit so that we can give you those syllabi and project updates and make sure everyone's staying on target to get the credit that they need. It's helpful to consider team involvement. Again, this is successfully completed as a solo provider, but if you're really working to ingrain this within your clinical practice, consider what individuals would be instrumental and helpful to making that happen and get them on board. And then next, log into KEDA and start your work. You can do that in the pre-work and baseline data collection module viewing that initial webinar, getting your baseline data collected, and seeing where you currently stand with respect to the project goals that we hope to achieve. And as we wrap up, their next steps then are looking at module one, that pre-work and baseline data collection. It does close December 15th, so you have between now and then to complete that. And then we do have the MOC2 that's currently being hosted at the Ohio Chapters Annual Meeting. If you did attend this and you are participating in this quality improvement project, please let Renee know so we can check off this element. Having participated at the AAP's annual meeting and submit those questions for MOC2, it eliminates one of the elements that's required. It's our MOC2 background webinar in Module 2, the learning session in PMP resources. And that's one less element that you have to complete on the online environment. Thank you for um, staying through this pre-work webinar and how you can prepare and lay a good foundation for your time within the PMP Quality Improvement Project. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Renee. Um, her information is listed on the workspace and she'll happily connect you to anyone to answer questions that she does not have the answer to.